Okay, I'm going to show you how to install for version 5. Um, just assume, like, there's different parts of this tutorial that I need to make sure that where you can find your current repository, but I'm doing this from scratch so I can kind of show you how everything works. So let's say that I am doing a fresh clone. Okay, I'm going to actually remove this because I have to record this twice because I messed something up, so we're going to do it again. So get clone. I'm going to clone the main repository. Once it's done, we are going to cd into it. So we're going to do cd alt v athena. You can also right click and just do open with code, whatever works for you. Uh, but I'm going to type code, period. There we go. Full screen this. Okay. So this is our version 401. Okay. So I need to set this up so that I have the actual private repository set up. So we're going to do that first. So go to GitHub, make sure you have an account, make sure you have your SSH keys set up. Uh, there's tutorials for it. Make sure to Google it or whatever. So you're going to go to new repository. You're going to create a new one. We're going to call it Alt TV Athena private test. We're going to set this to private so only I can see it. We're going to create the repository. We should see just this. If you see anything else, you have done it wrong, start over. Um, once you have this, you're going to copy this URL. So I have it copied. And then we're going to do a few things. So we're going to open this terminal, which was down here. You're going to go to terminal, new terminal. Okay. You're going to do git remote set URL push origin. And then we're going to paste that URL that we had here. Okay. And we're going to do git add asterisk. Do git commit. Add everything. And then we're going to do git push origin. And this is going to take everything from the Athena repository and push it to your private repository. Okay? So you're taking the current changes on Athena, you're forking it over to a new uh, version or a new version that's maintained by you, and it is entirely private. So while that is uploading, we will see the changes actually reflected um, in here in a moment once this is all uh, completed. I'm going to pause for a second and, we'll, and uh, we'll resume when this is done. Okay, so it is completed. We have the new branch. It is now available here. So if I refresh this, refresh this page, we see all of this, which is great. That's exactly what we need. All right, so now what do we do? So we want to upgrade to the 5.0 branch, uh, at least the alpha version of it. So how do we do this? So we need to disable the upstream for the main repository, which is mine. It's the one that I maintain. Going to run this command where we do git remote add upstream and then that and we're going to disable it just like that and then once this is done we get to move on to the next few steps so this is if you have an existing repository where you've made changes and things like that uh, this is where you're going to be um, starting off so if you want to upgrade this is how this is the step that you want um, so let's say for the sake of clarity here, I'm going to make a few changes so that you guys can also see what was done. So like, let's say that I made some changes in here to this login, um, this login plugin. Maybe I added some logs like this or some comments or whatever. I'm just going to add a few different things in here so you can see uh, what was done here as far as uh, the changes and stuff. So if I just add all these things, a couple different comments, like this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit this to the master branch real quick. I'm just going to call this like some random changes. So there we go. So that's all set up there. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to merge uh, from five, alpha five. So what you're doing in this step is what you would normally be doing if you want to access the new versions. So first thing you do, git fetch upstream. Okay. Here's all the available branches. You're looking for this one specifically, alpha five. So you're going to do git pull upstream alpha. 5.0. Okay. 
and we'll see something like automatic merge failed, fix conflicts, then commit the result. This means that something is wrong. Um, you need to fix it. So if we go over to this branch right here, the source control, you're going to see merge changes, okay? Ignore stage changes. These are already changes that are correct. We don't have to do anything special. Um, so let me explain. This crossed out file here means that this file no longer exists. So we do not need to keep it. So what we can do is we can right click it or we're going to, um, geez, what is it? Uh, you're gonna hit the little plus button. And it's gonna be like, hey, cat.ts was deleted by them and modified by us. What would you like to do? We don't wanna keep it. The file is gone. We no longer need it. So that means that I made a change that this file is no longer necessary. So click on delete file. It'll get staged. We no longer have to worry about it. So let's say we have another merge conflict here, okay? So what we're looking for is you're going to see a few different things here. So here's our changes here. This is the changes that I made earlier, right? So I see this little comment here, testing, wow, hello, okay, right? So we need to compare um, what's happening here. So uh, the current change is the changes that I made, right? And the incoming change, there is no incoming change. We just want to delete this code because it's no longer necessary. As you can see here, like all of this code is just, it's, it's not necessary. So what we can do is we can do accept incoming change. For 99% of the things that you're doing, it's going to be incoming changes. If it's something that you truly did change, you need to remember that because that's what you're going to be using to, um, to determine whether or not you need to accept the current change or accept both changes and make additional code changes to allow both. But in most cases, if you never touch the core code, you will never have to do, um, you'll never have to do this. So in the case here, we're doing an incoming change and we're removing this code. And that's what a merge conflict is. So we just resolved one there, okay? And once this is done, we go over here to the plus, hit stage changes, and we no longer have any additional conflicts to resolve. So now what we can do is we can commit, we can sync the changes and hit OK. Now these changes are going to be reflected uh, on the private repository that you have. So we're going to wait for all this to uh, synchronize here and it's done. So if I go into here and I refresh this, we're going to see all of these dates upgrade or update here. There we go. We got two weeks ago now, et cetera. So if we go to um, package.json, you'll see version five. And there you go. You now have a fully upgraded Athena 2 alpha version five. Now, in order to uh, demonstrate this a little bit further, I just want to show what version five looks like. I'm going to just run the normal commands in PMI to uh, install the node packages. And then after this, we're going to do npm run update. And then after that, we will run uh, like dev mode or Windows, uh, usually Windows if you've never ran it before. We'll give it just a moment. Okay, npm run update. It's gonna download all the server binaries. And I'm gonna give it just a moment. There it is, npm. And then we can just start the server at this point. Just npm run dev. What we should see is a whole bunch of errors. <laughs> so we probably need to look at what actually caused some of these errors to occur. Uh, let's see, commands, player, job. Oh, this looks like some uh, additional issues that I may have left over. But the point being, like, this is how you actually perform um these updates so i'm just going to try and debug this real quick if not then it's probably a waste of time but uh it's going to be under job yep okay so i just need to resolve this uh this is something that i need to do on my side as well but you know this is the alpha state of this we have a lot of things that need to be um fixed as well so that's just part of it systems job uh instance 
There we go. Go ahead and run it again. And this is a small change that I'm going to have to put on the main branch, so hopefully you won't run into this uh, as you're trying to do this as well. So there we go. Uh, if everything is correct, you'll see all of this stuff. You'll see a ton of commands, recipes, and streamer services all starting, and then you'll be able to connect from there. Uh, that being said, that is uh, an upgrade. So that's an install with the current branch, uh, the master branch. And then what we did is we did some changes, which is normally what you would have done. You did changes somewhere. And then what we did is we merged alpha 5 into our current branch to make it version 5. And we resolved a few little merge conflicts. And then after that, we pushed those changes up to the main repository, which is our private repository. And we are now upgraded to version 5. So that's what happened in this tutorial. And I hope that kind of helps clarify how all this stuff works. It's still confusing. But this is just Git and everything else as well. But this is the best way to manage versions without causing too many problems. Hope you guys understand it. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that.